Sysprep is a command line tool built into Windows that allows you to prepare and generalize a Windows installation for deployment and cloning as a Windows image file. The first option we'll use is Generalize. It removes specific information from the Windows installation, allowing that information to be customized in a unique way every time Windows is installed from a Windows image clone. The second option we'll use is OOBE, which causes the Windows Setup Wizard to run the first time Windows boots after running sysprep.exe. This allows the user to customize their installation, even though it is deployed from an image file. Now the next thing we need to do is use the uh, sysprep tool. And sysprep can do several things for us, um, but namely there's two that we're really interested in. First off, it can generalize a Windows installation. And that's important, I mean, um, I wouldn't want to, you know, if I was deploying this on a hundred machines or even a thousand, I wouldn't want them all to have the same host name. Um, or I wouldn't necessarily want them all to have the same, you know, if it was peer-to-peer, -peer, heaven forbid, a network that big would be peer-to-peer -peer a bit. I wouldn't want them all to have the same login names or usernames. Um, but, you know, whatever information is unique, keys, whatever, um, that kind of information you don't necessarily want in an image file because an image file, it's a snapshot. It's like a carbon copy of everything on the hard drive. So when you're cloning and you're imaging, um, and, and my personal preference, I love Ghost, and I like CloneZilla with Linux, and Ghost with everything from Linux to Windows to... Um, but, you know, and they too can work with the sysprep tool, but without the sysprep tool, um, there's always post-installation uh, tasks, or post-imaging tasks. You know, once you image the drive, then you've got to go and boot the machine and change the host name and, you know, possibly change other bits of information on the machine to make it unique on the network so that it's not like every other machine that you cloned or that you you know created from that image file. So sysprep is a cool tool because it helps you with that. Um, and so the first thing we want to do is go into the system32 uh, sysprep directory, which is in it's in the Windows directory. It seems like Microsoft puts everything in system32, don't they? So I'm just going to go ahead and change directories here. So I'm going to say cd, um, and I'll just recurse out, and I'm going to do cd windows. And I'm going to do CD system32. And I'm going to do CD sysprep. And in this folder, there's a sysprep tool, sysprep.exe. And I guess it bears mentioning, I'll recurse out one directory. And if I did this, dir with an asterisk or a wildcard, notice there's also a dynamic link library or DLL file there. And let me even go back one more. Uh, yeah, we go right there. Yeah, but anyway, we will, let's go back to the sysprep folder. Be easiest to run the command from there, don't you think? And I'm going to clear the screen so you know, we'll be able to see the output. Um, if there's any output or, or feedback that we get here, but um, here is sysprep.exe. So first thing we want to type is sysprep to access the command. The first argument we're going to supply is generalize. And again, that's to get rid of all of that you know, specific um, type of information that is in the installation so that you know, therefore we can customize it for every single computer. Yes, we're still going to clone all the applications and image all the data on the hard drive and all the installed software, but this lets us generalize it so that we can do unique installations from the same image file. Even though we're cloning, they can still be unique from each other. So that's the first argument there. And then the next argument is going to be forward slash OOBE. And what that'll do is that'll cause it to run the wizard. You know, the like the first time you run it, uh, Windows wizard that pops up. Like, you know, think about it when you buy a new computer um, from Dell or Gateway or Best Buy or whoever you get it from, uh, Tiger Direct, uh, PriceWatch.com, Amazon.com, Newegg, whatever, you know, who. Um, heaven forbid CDW, but whatever. So for who, who, whoever or wherever you get it, you know when you, that first time you boot it up, you have to go through the wizard, like the setup wizard, and, and put your name and your computer name and account information and all that, and choose options. Well, that this will cause that wizard to run. So hypothetically, let's say that you work for Dell and you had 10,000, you know, laptops of a certain model. So you had, you know, very carefully and meticulously prepared a, a Windows image with, um, you know, all of the default software, the drivers, um, all of the you know garbage and spam that Dell puts on their default installations, and um, 
now you would want to use the OOBE argument so that when the user gets their new computer and they boot it up, the wizard will run and they'll have the opportunity to customize it and configure it the way they like to. So those two, two main arguments are the ones we need, generalize and OOBE. So let's go ahead and run the sysprep tool. And this will take a while. A little window will pop up, say, sysprep is working. And when it's done, the computer will automatically shut down. And it's very important after this happens that you do not boot it. Because otherwise it'll get locked halfway in the wizard and nobody wants that. So, um, you just make sure that you don't reboot the machine until after you have imaged it. Once you've made an image of it, fine, you can do whatever you like. But we wa want it to be in a pristine condition, which means that we do not want to boot this um, computer again until we have you know, imaged it completely with our imaging tool, ImageX. And it's 4.44 a.m. and I just happened to look at the clock. Once SysPrep automatically shuts your computer down, it is ready for imaging with imagex.exe. Do not boot it from its hard drive again until after you have imaged it. Otherwise, all SysPrep's work will be undone. In part 4, we will use imagex.exe to build a Windows image file or WIM file of what SysPrep has prepared. Note that we will boot off of the ISO we previously prepared and not the hard drive. However, so that you may see the effects of SysPrep with the generalized and OOBE options, what follows is a video of a system booting the first time after being cloned from a SysPrep Windows image file or WIM file made with imagex.exe. Alright, and just to show you, <coughs> in the image file that we created, remember we used SysPrep? And we used two options, the generalized option and the OOBE option, to turn on the configuration wizard. And just to show you what it looks like, um, again, this is like, you know, when you buy a new computer and you go through the configuration wizard to personalize it or set it up. So, in other words, we could, you know, create a master image for a certain kind of PC with a certain hardware configuration and a certain configuration of software, maybe Office and Photoshop and other applications. And we could deploy it, but we could still have it so that each time, you know, the user booted that computer the first time off of that image, it would allow them to personalize it and put their personal information, name, computer name, whatever they wanted to in, in the computer. So it's a pretty cool tool. And you can see that Windows is booting now. And remember that it made several registry changes. So you can see right now it's um, you know, updating the registry. This part's kind of cool. I like that little it's like a Cylon, you know, a little, like the old Cylon. <coughs> well, anyway, if you're a BSG fan. And once, <coughs> once again in the scenario, like, imagine you work for a company like Dell or Gateway or somebody. And you had, you know, like a few thousand or maybe 10,000 computers of a certain model. And so part of your job might be to prepare an image for those computers. So you could use a tool like, um, you know, ImageX, and you might prepare a Windows image with Windows 7, the software, and you might install certain things like Office Trial and all the crazy hokey trial versions and spyware that they, they put on new computers. Usually format mine the first day and get rid of all that garbage. But anyway, <coughs> your job as a tech might be to do this, right, to put all the Dell stuff on it and all the gateway stuff and whatever. And uh, so you get all that installed and set up, and then, of course, you, the last thing you do, you'd run sysprep on the image. And once you did that, um, you know, then you would copy it to the machines in mass, 1,000, 10,000, whatever. You ship them out to all of your customers, and then once they purchase their new computer, the first time they boot it up is, you know, this is typically kind of what you see. You go through a, a wizard setup process where you can customize and personalize the computer, but you'll notice that... It's not like a default installation of Windows 7. Um, it's already been pre-installed with software. Well, that was an image file with that software placed on the machine. And there are other utilities out there. Um, you know, I, I, Ghost is my favorite. I, I like to use Ghost products, and I like Clonezilla on the Linux side. 
but this is a built-in Windows tool that would let you create image files and deploy them. Another possible scenario, um, you know, imagine you're <coughs> And you work for a large corporation <coughs> and you guys are doing upgrading so you're upgrading your workstations and maybe you're going from a dual core processor to quad core <coughs> and a 32-bit architecture to a 64-bit architecture so in a situation like that everything has changed everything is different and maybe you're moving from Vista to Windows 7 or who knows in office 2007 to 2010 or something like that and in that situation or in that scenario the easiest way to do it again would be to create an image file, a master image with all the software changes, um, all the application packages and things installed that you want and then to simply deploy that image across the network um, you know with all those packages installed in that image and then maybe customize each computer as it boots up and there's other technologies we'll look at um, in in the upcoming sessions, like using answer files that will automate the process of in installing, and there's, there, there's all kinds of things that go along with it, but basically just this capability to image, you know, or create images is, would be very useful in many different situations. And here it's, you know, configuring devices, and we're at 82%, so we jumped ahead a little bit, and now we're at 100%. As far as the devices, supplying system settings, and soon it'll start the you know the setup wizard where we can personalize and customize the computer. And we're gonna reboot. And notice and it says setup is preparing your computer for first use there's that cool little Cylon thing yeah number six is in my computer this message has been officially approved by Gaius okay and now again we're we reboot and now we're at the setup wizard so I'm gonna click next <coughs> and I can type a username and a computer name if I choose. Um, Gaius Baltar, I have no idea if that's how you spell his name, but um, we'll call it, we'll rename, or we'll name our computer Cellin Bishop. Type your password. You can make it different. Not hard to guess. <coughs> Of course, we have to sign things. I'll say ask me later to decrease the speed of the video. Eastern time is good for me. Um, home network, most trusted. Okay, and notice, here's our image file, and there's the software, there's the Microsoft Windows AIK, and 
I was trying to keep it small, so, but it, anything else we installed, here's Win PCAP, Kane enable. So that's not the default Windows software that comes in default installation, but you can see that that's the image that we made and all the software that we installed, and yet still with some customization added to it. And if I were to log off, you can see that all of the information, the user accounts, things that were in the computer before are still there. It's just that because of SysPrep, we ran the setup wizard. So we were able to set up the new account, Gaius Baltar. We were able to rename the computer, the host name. But C Germany, Peter Griffin, and Starbuck are still there. So, you know, on all of the software applications and so forth.